Good afternoon, and welcome to the Cathedral Basilica of St. James. Today is Monday, the 24th week in Ordinary Time. Please join in singing our opening hymn, number 837, Diverse in Culture, Nation, Race. Number 837, Diverse in Culture, Nation, Race, verses 2 and 4. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. My brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done, in what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask Blessed Mary, ever Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, Forgive us our sins and bring us to everlasting life. Let us pray. Look upon us, O God, creator and ruler of all things, and that we may feel the working of your mercy, grant that we may serve you with all our heart. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. A reading from the first letter of St. Paul to Timothy. Beloved, first of all, I ask that supplications, prayers, petitions, and thanksgivings be offered for everyone, for kings and all in authority, that we may lead a quiet and tranquil life in all devotion and dignity. This is good and pleasing to God, our Savior, who wills everyone to be saved and to come to the knowledge of the truth. For there is one God, 
there is also one mediator between God and men, the man, Christ Jesus, who gave himself as ransom for all. This is the testimony at the proper time. For this I was appointed preacher and apostle. I am speaking the truth. I am not lying. Teacher of the Gentiles in faith and truth. It is my wish then that in every place the men should pray lifting up holy hands without anger or argument. The word of the Lord. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. When Jesus had finished all his words to the people, he entered Capernaum. A centurion there had a slave who was ill and about to die, and he was valuable to him. When he heard about Jesus, 
he sent elders of the Jews to him, asking him to come and save the life of his slave. They approached Jesus and strongly urged him to come, saying, he deserves to have you do this for him, for he loves our nation and he built the synagogue for us. And Jesus went with them. But when he was only a short distance from the house, the centurion sent friends to tell him, Lord, do not trouble yourself, for I am not worthy to have you enter under my roof. Therefore, I did not consider myself worthy to come to you. But say the word, and let my servant be healed. For I too am a person subject to authority, with soldiers subject to me. And I say to one, go, and he goes. And to another, come here, and he comes. And to my slave, do this, and he does it. When Jesus heard this, he was amazed at him, and turning, said to the crowd following him, I tell you, not even in Israel have I found such faith. When the messengers returned to the house, they found the slave in good health. The Gospel of the Lord. Many times we get requests from people asking us to pray for them. As a priest, people approach me and ask that I pray for them for whatever intention. But priests are not the only one who should pray for others. All of us Christians, we have the responsibility to pray for one another. This is the lesson that the first reading and the gospel give us today. In the first reading, St. Paul tells us that we have to pray for everyone, including those who govern us and those in authority, because God wants everyone to be saved and to come to the knowledge of the truth. Sometimes we complain about those who govern us or politicians. We say, this politician, his policies are not good. That politician does not respect human dignity. But the question is, do we pray for them? Do we pray for their conversion? Do we pray that they may come to know and to be led by the truth of the gospel. This is what St. Paul is asking us in the first reading today, to pray for everyone. And today's gospel also teaches us an important lesson about prayer. The centurion was a Roman, a pagan, but a member of his household was sick, his slave, was not well. He approached Jesus through the elders of the Jews to plead his cause, which is the healing of his servant. He did not approach Jesus directly because he considered himself unworthy to stand before the Lord or unworthy to receive Jesus in his house. But he had faith that the Lord Jesus has the power to heal his servant. The Lord praised the faith of the centurion and healed his servant. We all know people in our lives who are in need of our prayers. Those who are sick, those who are mourning, those who are depressed, those who are sleeping on the streets, those who have no one to care for them. We should bring all these people to the Lord in prayer. Sometimes we may even say, like the centurion, I am not worthy to stand before you, O Lord. 
Yes, no one is worthy. But the Lord looks at our faith and our trust in him. As we say in the liturgy, Lord, look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church. And so, my brothers and sisters, when you come to church or when you say your prayers at home, intercede for someone. Do not pray only for yourselves, but pray also for someone else who may be in need of your prayers. And so today, we ask for God's grace in this Eucharist that we may follow the advice of St. Paul in the first reading to pray for everyone and we may also imitate the attitude of faith of the centurion to intercede for those who are most in need. Amen. Please stand. As his faithful children, we turn to the Father in prayer to present our petitions to him. For the church, may the Lord grant her courage in bringing the gospel to all in need of its healing message. Let us pray to the Lord. For civic leaders, may God help them to truly see and hear the needs of those they govern. Let us pray to the Lord. For the sick, may Jesus sustain them and grant them hope. Let us pray to the Lord. For all of us gathered here and those watching through the media, may the Lord's teaching shape our lives and his grace conform us evermore to his loving heart. Let us pray to the Lord. For all who have died, especially Maria Chen Yue Zhao, for whom this Mass is offered, that through the mercy of God, they may be with him in eternal life. Let us pray to the Lord. For our own intentions, which we hold in the silence of our heart. Let us pray to the Lord. Everlasting God, you sent your Son to bring us new life. We ask that you hear the prayers we offer in faith and grant them according to your holy will, through Christ our Lord. Pray, my sisters and brothers, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Amen. 
Look with favor on our supplications, O Lord, and in your kindness accept these your servants' offerings, that what each has offered to the honor of your name may serve the salvation of all, through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. In him, you have been pleased to renew all things, giving us all a share in his, in his fullness. For though he was in the form of God, he emptied himself, and by the blood of his cross, brought peace to all creation. Therefore, he has been exalted above all things, and to all who obey him has become the source of eternal salvation. And so with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, and with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory as without end we acclaim. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, this gift, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and the blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. Mystery of faith. Save us, save us, Savior of the world, for by your cross and resurrection you have set us free. 
Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and the blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and Robert, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be coerced to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. <clears throat> Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Yours now and forever. Amen. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Let us offer each other the sign of peace.
Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. Let us pray. May the working of this heavenly gift, O Lord, we pray, take possession of our minds and bodies, so that its effect and not our own desires may always prevail in us through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go forth, the Mass is ended. The closing hymn is number 780, Singing Songs of Expectation. Number 780, Singing Songs of Expectation. <laughs> 